Finally, we're going to be talking about word problems involving quadratic equations. Now, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that it's very easy to solve word problems if you break them down step by step. The bad news is the only way to really get comfortable with that is practice. Practice, 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 because no word problem will be set up exactly the same way. So here's where you're really testing whether you can apply what we've been practicing the past couple of weeks. So the best way to go about this is to go ahead and work with some examples, and you'll start to see how to set up certain problems. Again, these are only a couple examples. The more you practice, the more you're familiar with different types of steps involved in solving word problems. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. So, a rectangular cardboard measures 28 centimeters by 20 centimeters. A picture of area 300 square centimeters is pasted on the cardboard so as to leave a border of uniform width on all four sides. Find the width of the border. So, let's see, first thing we need is a picture. Here we go, there's a picture. Um, let's go with the information that we know. We know that it measures 28 centimeters by 20. So this entire length is 28, and this entire length is 20. We also know that there's a uniform border. So all of these side lengths from here to here and here to here, they all equal x. All right, we've set up the problem. Oh, we also know that the picture has an area of 300 square centimeters. So then, we know that the length of the picture is going to be 28 minus 2x centimeters, and the width of the picture is going to be 20 minus 2x centimeters, and how do we get those values? because I'm starting with 28, and then in order to get what's left, I have 1x here, 1x here, which gets me 2x, and so that leaves this value of 28 minus 2x, and then the same thing on the other side, I'm starting with a total length of 20, and I have an x here and an x there, leaving me 2x. When I subtract those values, what's left is the picture. So to set up my equation, I'm gonna set it up as 28, minus 2x times 20 minus 2x equals 300. That means I get 560 minus 96x plus 4x squared equals 300. Again, if you're lost on that one, go ahead and expand everything out bit by bit. And you'll see where those values come from. Now I'm here at 560 minus 96x plus 4x squared equals 300. I'm going to combine my like terms here. What I'm going to do is set it up so that it is equal to 0 by subtracting 300 from both sides. And then doing a little bit of rearranging, I get 4x squared minus 96x plus 260 equals 0. All right, we might be tempted to plug this into the quadratic formula. You can. We, could, we might be tempted to plug this into the cross method. <laughs> you really shouldn't, but you can. Um, what we can see, though, is that all of these values, 4, 96, and 260, are divisible by 4. So I'm going to divide everything by 4, even 0, because we're dividing everything by 0, or by 4, sorry. So now I get x squared minus 24x plus 65 equals 0. All right. Um, you know what? I don't think the cross method is going to work here. I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So if you remember, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, now let me plug in my values. Let's see, x equals negative, negative 24, which is going to be a positive 24. 
plus or minus the square root of negative 24 squared minus 4 times 1 times 65. Extend that out over there. All over 2a, which is 2 times 1. See, I told you a isn't always 4. All right. So moving on, let's keep on keeping on. x equals 24, again that's a positive, plus or minus the square root of 316 over 2. Where did I get 316? I took the square of 24, and from it I subtracted 4 times 65. The product of 4 times 65. Remember order of operations, we need to do the multiplication first before we do any subtraction. Really that subtraction is going to be saved till the end. So I have 24 plus or minus the square root of 316 divided by 2. So that means I have x equals 24 plus the square root of 316 divided by 2 or x equals 24 minus the square root of 316 over 2. Now that gives me two separate answers. My answer is either x equals approximately 3.11, rounding to three significant figures, or x equals 20.9. So here's the important part with word problems, especially given a specific context where you're dealing with a picture frame and you need to find the border of x. All right. We know it has to be either 3.11 or 20.9. We know it cannot be, we know the border cannot be 20.9. There's a very important reason why that border cannot be 20.9. So then our answer has to be 3.11, which means the width equals 3.11 centimeters. Always remember the context of the problem, and that's how you're going to remember your units. All right, let's take a look at everyone's favorite algebra problem. The distance between two towns a and B is 120 kilometers. Mr. Singh drove from A to B, town A to town B, very cleverly named, mind you, at an average speed of V kilometers per hour. So we don't know what it is. On his return journey, his average speed was 5 kilometers per hour greater than his average speed from A to B. So it took him 20 fewer minutes to get there. Find the value of V. All right, so from A to B, we have V kilometers per hour. From B to A, on the way back, he drove a little faster. We know that was V plus 5 kilometers per hour faster. All right, so far, so good. So then the time taken, we don't know how much time he took, but we do know that the distance between the two towns is 120 kilometers. So if we take that 120, divide it by the kilometers per hour, we're going to get the time that it took to make the trip. Then the time taken for the way back is going to be that same 120 kilometers over that new speed, and that will leave us with the hours. So again, just to clarify, this is A to B, and this is back B to A. So we know that the return time taken was 20 minutes fewer than the time there. So I'm going to set up my problem as 120 over V minus 
120 over v plus 5 equals 20 over 60. Since it was set up in terms of hours, I need to make sure that I set up my 20 minutes in terms of relative to hours. I just can't set it as equal to 20. So I know it's 20 over 60, one third of an hour, which I can go ahead and write down right now. So let me just rewrite that. 120 over v minus 120 over v plus 5 equals one third. Now, what I said before is that there's no specific way to solve each sort of word problem. But what you'll start to notice is that as you look at certain problems, you'll see certain types of problems are set up the same way. So even though you're not solving it the same way, the more you practice, the more you'll see, oh, going from one distance to another, constant speed type things. I'll set it up this way. But anyway, here's our problem. So what I'm going to do now is multiply everything, if we think back to what we've done before, by the constant of v, uh, common denominator of v times v plus 5. So that's going to get things to cancel out, which means I'm going to have 120 over v times v times v plus 5 over 1 minus 120 over v plus 5 times v times v plus 5 over 1 equals 1 third v v plus 5. All right, a lot of different stuff there. It's going to get ugly before it gets better. Actually, right now it's about to get better because I'm canceling out some terms here and I can see my v's cancel out. So I'm left with 120 in parentheses v plus 5 minus 120 v equals 1 third v times v plus 5. All right, so as we can see, let me just take a quick little step back to show you that the v's cancel here and the v plus 5's cancel here. And nothing canceled on the right hand side. So what I get is 120v um, plus 600. That took a little too long, didn't it? 120v plus 600 minus, oh, this is so convenient, 120v, and that's going to leave me with 600. So 600 equals one-third v times v plus 5. You might be, um, you might want to go ahead and distribute that one-third v, but what I encourage you to do is to cancel out this one-third. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. That's going to cancel the third here. And so now what I'm left with is 1800 equals v times, in parentheses, v plus 5. Now I can go ahead and expand, and I'm going to get 1800 equals v squared plus 5v. And you know what I'm going to do next? I'm going to create a quadratic function a quadratic equation, actually, by subtracting 1,800 from both sides. So now what I have is v squared plus 5v minus 1,800 equals 0. All right, so I can either use the quadratic formula, and I'll get the right answer, or two right answers anyway. Or I can use the cross method, and what I can see is because I am a great factor of quadratics, that this factors to v minus 40 times v plus 45. Again, if you're not sure where those values came from, use the cross method or the quadratic formula. Because you'll get to the point where your answers are either v equals 40 or v equals negative 45. All right, let's take a look at the context of the problem. Find the value of v. Well, what are we talking about? Um, we are trying to figure out the average speed 
of v kilometers per hour. So what we need to do is decide whether 40 or negative 45 is our answer. And we have to realize that 40 is the proper answer because you cannot drive negative 45 kilometers per hour. I defy you to try and reason that out. All right, that's it. Again, um, the idea is back to back to back.